Well, at least no one sat and ate a pie for five whole minutes in this movie. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today our movie in the middle is The Green Knight. The Green Knight is directed by David Lowry and is the most recent adaptation of the narrative poem Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Although after watching it, now maybe I'm thinking it's Gawain or Garwin. Who knows? The Green Knight stars Dev Patel, Alicia Vikander, and Joel Edgerton. And the most exciting thing about it, it is A24's first fantasy movie. Like, they've done some sci-fi stuff and some more mystical, supernatural things, you know, with the Hereditary and Midsommar and some of their other horrors. But this is like their first true high fantasy movie. We already know how these types of things go, you know, with Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings. How would they do it? And how they do it is how they do all the others. A slow burn with someone on fire and lots and lots of weird shit. The absolute biggest high of this movie is the cinematography. It's so good. Just watching the trailer, you already know that's going to be the best thing about this movie. It is a very visual movie. Like, the, the, the color palette of every single scene... The actual tone, the color grading, um, the, the shots that are used, everything, it just looked like it was going to be so cool. And it was. The cinematography is just beautiful. Everything they did with it, it was just awesome. Color is a really important part of this movie, considering it's called The Green Knight, but it's about themes that go with colors and what they mean for somebody's honor or somebody's sins, whatever it might be. So obviously color was a huge part of the cinematography as well here, and they just did. <clears throat> the scenes themselves were also really cool. There were a lot of really interesting ideas that, from what I remember, I don't think were in the original narrative poem. It's been a couple years since I've read it, but there were a lot of really cool things. I love the fox. You know, I just thought a fox is just such a cool creature, and especially one that can talk. It was really cool. It's like all these really giant giants. And a bunch of other, like, just really cool scenes that were just more original fantasy ideas, you know? There were really cool concepts, really cool characters, and just awesome fantasy tone overall. You know, it's just one of those that you're like, I'm gonna put on to, like, fall asleep to because it's just, like, pure fantasy. And, like, I don't say relaxing, because it's definitely intense and weird at times, but, like, it's just got that, like, medieval feel to it. Dev Patel was also awesome. I mean, everybody in this movie was great, but Dev Patel really was just, he's so good. He he plays, obviously, Sir Gowan, Garwin, Gawain, whatever. He's, like, trying to not redeem his honor, but, like, gain it at first. And uh, he, he's not really a great person, um, so he's learning along the way. But he, he was a really interesting character because he wasn't flat. You know, he, he makes a lot of mistakes. He has a lot of struggles and challenges. Um, he's a little overconfident at times, so it, he was a really great character, and, and Dev Patel did a really good job. The title itself is also very cool when I thought about it more, because the Green Knight could mean literally the, the green tree-looking knight that comes and challenges Sir Gawain, or it could mean the Green Knight Sir Gawain, Gawain, who isn't yet a knight, hasn't yet earned his honor, so he's still kind of green, he's new, he's fresh, so I, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. I have two middle elements. One is that I didn't feel there were a lot of stakes in this movie. On one hand, I just w wasn't able to be so suspenseful about it because, like, even in the trailer, you know, it's th the challenge is whatever you do to me, I will do to you in one year's time. S so we know what's going to happen. Like, yeah, maybe there's a twist. Maybe something different is going to happen. But for the most part, we're like, okay, he's going to... To, to meet this Green Knight, and the Green Knight's gonna do to him what we just saw him do to the Green Knight in the first 12 minutes of the movie. So, what's the question here, you know? So just watching it the whole time, I was like, this is a really great epic journey, um, but I just, once we get to the end, I'm, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm like, what's gonna happen? Because I feel like I knew what was gonna happen. On the other hand of that, though, I do get that, like, in all of these high fantasy movies and tv shows and stories honor and getting honor is a very big stake you know whether it's life or death or torture or whatever 
the biggest you know thing at stake for a lot of these characters is was I a coward or was I a hero? So I get that, you know, but just in terms of a viewer, it was like, I feel like I know what's going to happen here. Honestly, there's probably a lot more to the theme of honor here and a, and a lot of other themes I probably just didn't understand because it's A24 and I'm, I have to watch them like a million times before I slightly understand what's going on <laughs> in terms of themes and what they're trying to get across in certain scenes because it's A24. It, it's no excuse for sometimes being a little too vague, but you can pretty much expect A24 to be a little more abstract than your mainstream fantasy movie. And besides everything with, uh, you know, honor being a very big stake, they employ a lot of other uh, techniques and things from really old classic fantasy stories like Beowulf and Grendel, specifically Deus Ex Machina, you know, which is basically, you know, it's, it's been um, overused a lot now, but basically it means just something you need just appears because God willed it to appear there. And that happens a lot in this movie, which I was like, I guess, you know, because it, it's it's in fantasy. Like, that is a thing that it, that exists. So it's not like it's out of nowhere, but it is quite literally out of nowhere. So a lot of these struggles that he has are resolved just because of deus ex machina, which is annoying, but it's also part of fantasy. So I can't fault him for it. The other middle element that I have is that a lot of people were saying that if you read the poem beforehand, it's either going to enhance it or it's going to be ruined because it's going to be different. And at first I was like, all right, well, it's an adaptation. You know, who, who cares? It's it's like it's obviously going to be a little different. But I kind of get it because they take part of the like a very big main part of the poem and put it in for like a scene or two. But it's like they don't commit one way or the other. It's it's like they wanted to have some of it in there, but they didn't do the whole thing, which didn't feel like, why would you put it in there at all? Now, at the same time, I, I get that, you know, they wanted that element in there, and it didn't really need to be the whole thing for the rest of this journey. It was just like a scene because it was obviously getting its themes across and some of its characters and ideas. You know, staying for the, the whole part of it would have been overkill, but it just felt like... If you did read the poem, it is a little annoying that they would put it in there, but not, like, go all the way. So, again, it's a middle element. I do have one low, and that is that I couldn't really connect with the movie. You know, a lot of fantasy, it's it's weird, because some fantasy you watch to be like, whoa, that's really cool. Maybe I don't connect with all of it, but, like, that's an insane world. And then some fantasies you watch because uh, you connect with the characters, you love the characters, like The Hobbit, you know, something like that, or Harry Potter. This one is more of the, this is a really cool world. I can't really connect with it. And I wanted to be able to connect with it, considering this character is somebody who's like, should be relatable. He's, he's like really struggling and he's really trying and, and he's messing up a lot. But he's just such a not good person for most of it. The whole movie itself feels kind of hollow, it just feels like, okay, we're on this journey with this guy. He's cool, um, but he's got some struggles. But I don't know. It just felt for most of it like, I, I can't think of any other word than hollow. It just doesn't feel like there was a lot of, I don't want to say substance, but a lot behind the wall of incredible cinematography and, and production design. I was like, I wanted more feeling with it. And I just didn't get that. It kind of felt to me like The Revenant. But with The Revenant, I cared about Glass. I cared about his journey. And even then, you know, there was a lot of great cinematography in that. But I still sort of had an emotional attachment. Here, I didn't have as much of one. But, you know, I mean, it is a fantasy. It's, it's much more about the, the scope, the spectacle. But I feel like they really try to have you empathize with the main character. And, and sometimes I just didn't get that. So overall, The Green Knight is a really great watch. I do love it. There are some issues that I have in terms of the story and in, in terms of some choices they made and just overall feel of trying to connect with it. Um, but if you're looking for a movie that is like a really cool new fantasy, you definitely want to go watch this movie. It wasn't a letdown by any means, um, but considering it was one of my most anticipated of the year, when I watched it, I was like, okay, I don't think it quite meant what my expectations were going to be. Um, again, just because of the emotional part of it. But in terms of the cinematography, the scope, the just the very cool elements of this fantasy movie, it, it definitely meant that. David Lowry is really cool because both of his movies have had these weird emotional, you know, absences to them. But they also kind of make you feel something. And they're also very well shot. 
they're just weird. He has like this hollow feel to his movies, but you, you kind of, it's endearing. You kind of still like them. It, it's weird. Um, so if you haven't seen a ghost story, watch that one too. And definitely watch this. It is one of the more palatable A24s, one of the more mainstream ones, I would say. Still a slow burn, still some very weird moments, still some very moments you don't want to watch with your parents, but palatable and, and you know, definitely more of a story and more of just a regular journey fantasy movie for A24 especially. I'm going to give The Green Knight a 3 out of 4. Let me know what you guys think of The Green Knight in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think of the ending, especially the end line. Because at first I was like, cool, that was, that was, that was an interesting ending dialogue. But then I kept thinking, and it actually, for me at least, could have two different meanings. And one of them is very wholesome, and the other one is very terrifying. So I want to know what you guys think of the, of the ending. And as always, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and movies right in the middle. I'll see you guys later.